Hey guys, welcome to TFL Talking Trucks, and today something special from the cockles of my heart. Right down here, because I love cheap used vehicles. And today, we're gonna talk about acquiring an inexpensive used pickup truck, because let's face it, new pickup trucks are way too expensive. Am I right, Andre? Yes, and we have all had personal experiences with this oh, recently. Yeah. I just purchased a brand new truck. We talked about that on the previous episode of TFL Talking Trucks. Right. We also, as a company, TFL Truck and TFL Off-Road, mm -hmm. we have purchased three trucks for under five grand. Each. Each. And we learned a lot still. You know, there is always some more to learn when you're picking the best used truck. So in this segment, in this on this episode, what I want to really do is go over several actually trucks on Craigslist mm -hmm. that we found just now Yep. and actually check them out and are they good, are they bad? You know, how do you pick a good truck for under five grand? That is a great question. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together we can make this podcast the most popular ever. This episode of TFL's Talking Trucks is brought to you by Good Guys LMC Truck Spring Lone Star Nationals, taking place this March 12th through the 14th at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, Texas. The Lone Star Nationals will feature more than 2,000 hot rods, customs, muscle cars, trucks, and other classics. Special to this event, the first ever Ultimate Truck Showcase featuring All-American Truck Autocross Competition, other truck-specific vendors, a swap meet, and a truck-only cruise. Plus this year, a new generation of classic trucks will debut, OBS trucks, from 1988 to 1998. For complete details and to register your truck or to purchase tickets, go to good-guys.com slash SLSN. All right, so you might be wondering, why are we buying these trucks, each one for under $5,000? And we have a special program, I can't tell you too much about it, that's coming up in the future, a series, and we're going to take these trucks and do special things with them, and each truck kind of caters to our own personality. So, you probably have seen these trucks already on TFL Classics. Some right? channels, some yep, other channels. Yep. Some other channels. But the thing is, is that we started thinking about it, wow, Right now, trucks are, you can buy a half decent pickup truck with a lot of miles on it for five grand or even less. Uh, but there are a lot of things out there that uh, you guys need to know, including a lot of unsavory people out there who are willing to push something on you that you do not want. So we we're gonna go through Craigslist. By the way, Craigslist is not sponsoring this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. And we're only using Craigslist because it was really easy. We know about all the other ones on Facebook and everything else. Uh, but this is simple, it's free, and we're able to get pictures. And that's what we wanted to provide for you. Uh, one final note before Andre gets going. Um, most of the listings were um, acquired from this area, so Boulder and Denver, Colorado. However, there are a couple on here that came from Los Angeles, my old hometown. So I figured if I couldn't find them here, I would find them there, which I did. Absolutely. And these are mostly full-size trucks. We're not talking about compact trucks. We're not talking about mid-sizers. Mm -hmm. right? We're focusing on full-size and some heavy-duty trucks. That's true. But, but mainly, you know, that's kind of a thing that you might be faced with, right? Mm -hmm. I need a truck to tow something or haul something. For work or whatever, yeah. yeah. And I don't want to spend, I don't want a monthly payment maybe. Maybe I have a few thousand bucks saved up. I want to buy something immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why we're doing this. And like you said, we did purchase an F-150. Yep. A Chevy K-1500, basically a Silverado. Basically, yep. Um, and also a Dodge Ram 1500, all for under 5K. And we learned a lot in the process. Yes. Your mileage may vary <laughs> in so many ways. And your experiences will vary. Oh, indeed. So let's look at the, uh, the Craigslist uh, li listings that you found mm -hmm. uh, here. And there's the first one. Um, by the way, uh, you can also watch this. If you're listening to us, TFL Talk channel is our podcast channel on right. YouTube. And if you're watching, if you don't like looking at our faces, you can listen to us. I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> okay. But let's get on to this. Now, once again, we, we've been through this many times before. I buy used vehicles habitually. 
but everybody at TFL recently had to get together and find these three particular trucks for this thing that we're putting together. And it was interesting because it was a lot harder in some ways than we expected. Andre and I actually did go out and look at a few trucks uh, on our own, uh, Tommy as well and Roman. Um, and in some cases, there was good stuff. In other cases, we're really glad we went out there and didn't buy them sight unseen because there were some real problems with some of these trucks. Yeah, so let's start with this one. Uh, this one you picked out personally. Uh, 2006 Chevy Silverado 1500 extended cab four wheel drive. This one is listing at 4,900 bucks. Um, and it's actually 2006, it's a recent model. It's a good looking one too. Isn't yeah, it? it's, it's a good model, uh, really good um, kind of styling from that era. And um, it's, you know, the paint looks nice. And here's a couple of things I'm looking for first before even calling this person, for example, mm -hmm. right? First of all, lots of different images. Yep. So this listing has about 12 images. You see one from the top, from the front, from the side, from the rear. Are there you, interior shots too? Because yes. That's there, something a lot of people leave out. Yeah, there's a bed shot and the bed looks pretty nice. Wheel and tire, so you can see the condition of the tires. Um, of course, interior with open doors, then steering wheel. And the most important one, you see the odometer. <coughs> You see the odometer and the mileage actually that's provided on that, the truck. That's huge. This is really, is this a dealership? I think it looks like a dealership. Oh, let's see. Yeah, this may be a dealership. So yeah. once again, you can choose, right? Uh, you can go private party. Mm -hmm. You can do a used dealer and you can actually select, you know, depending on what your tool is, you know, if you're using this site or another site, you can kind of select and see which kind of way you want to purchase the right. truck. Um, and benefits of a dealer is, well, first of all, they probably checked it out, you would hope. You would hope, yeah. Right? They may have a mechanic on site that mm -hmm. you can actually, or maybe a lift where you can raise the truck in the air and right. actually go underneath it and look at it. So those are the good things. Um, and of course, you know, you can go back to them if you have some issues, maybe. Sometimes. And, and actually talk to them sometimes. But generally, you're buying as is, mm -hmm. right? You're buying this vehicle the way it is. Or, or private party. Maybe you don't want the hassle and bustle of the dealer. You want to talk to the person, you know, personally. Well, uh, there's, in my experience, and, and you know, I bought a lot of used vehicles in my time. Uh, when I worked at my family wrecking yard, I had to buy them from um, a, a lot of different people, including yeah. auctions. The point is, is that um, sometimes when you're doing private party, you can actually really negotiate and really get that price down. and quite often these people want the most money they can get for their vehicle because the trading value is just crap and it always is it's almost always bad with trading so that's one thing with a private party the other side of it is yes in some cases dealerships will actually get a half decent vehicle but you have to understand that a lot of used car dealerships do go through auctions and they'll grab whatever they can find some of these vehicles have been in accidents some of them will show that on their carfax or other forms but some won't and you have to keep that in mind. But the one good thing is this particular dealership, I'll give them credit, because they're showing the vehicle lots of different pictures, good pictures, and it's already a good sign. It already convinces me that, hey, this is worth looking at if I want a high mileage truck. Yeah, and this is a high mileage truck. This particular one is listed and actually shown on the dash picture uh -huh. of 252,000 miles. Um, and Damn! This, <laughs> and this particular is the one is a 5.3 liter V8. So this engine is familiar to you probably because GM has has several different generations of this engine. Yeah. And yes, in a lot of cases, if you're not towing heavy, this is a really good motor. Well, Actually, yeah, I mean, it's 252,000 miles on the thing. I mean, that's pretty damn impressive right there. Yeah, but it is high mileage. <laughs> so I, would I recommend this truck straight up? Well, maybe not, unless you actually drive it, actually feel how the brakes work, you know, how the transmission shifts, yeah. you know, the engine, uh, any other issues, right? You have to test drive it. And there is nothing wrong with requesting from either a private party or the salesman, hey, I want to take it to a mechanic. And that's a whole different video. At some point in time, we'll talk about that. But the reality is, is that you can, in some cases, slip the uh, mechanic a hundred bucks to quickly go through a vehicle, maybe even put it on and put a plug in an OBD2 to make sure that there's no red flags that pop up. These types of things you can do. And if you're going to spend 5,000 bucks, look, that's still money. So it's worth trying to do. One thing to keep in mind, very, very important. A lot of the trucks that are super, super cheap tend to have a lot of rust damage. Rust is the enemy for trucks. So if it's too good to be true, 
and it's running good, look underneath the truck. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and also, you talked about negotiating personally, right? Mm -hmm. With person to person, private party. That's right. Um, I had an experience a couple of months ago looking for an Ford F-150 mm -hmm. for our project, uh, where we're, our video series that we're working on, and uh, the guy wouldn't come down. Hmm. He was one owner truck. It was a pretty good condition truck. Wasn't that that green one? Yeah, it was uh, a green F-150. It was a short bed, mm -hmm. short cab, really good shape. It didn't drive quiet, you know, like a modern truck is. It had a lot of steering play. Right. And he was very proud of it, and he would not come down on price. And then the next, so and I kind of walked away. Yeah. But the next day, I, I looked again, and it was gone. So he probably sold it. Oh, so uh, the truck was desirable enough to where he had a high price on it, and he got it, and somebody else bought it. But you know, there's something very important. There's a there's a two parts to that lesson. One is don't be afraid to walk away. There are other trucks out there. And the other is if somebody says, hey man, I got more buyers coming. Personally speaking, I usually smile and say, that's great, good luck. And, or you can use that as saying, all right, well, here's my final offer before those bu uh, buyers come in. Usually someone has a set price in their head and they really don't want to go underneath it. So let's say if it's a $4,200 truck, going to $4,000, that shouldn't be a problem. But in some cases, like Andre was mentioning, some people just do not want to come down, not for one penny. And also we've, what we found out recently is that, especially in Colorado, mm -hmm. especially in the wintertime, mm. uh, trucks are in high demand. Oh yeah. You know, people want four wheel drive vehicles, people want you know, the, the traction that that offers, the utility, and just in general usefulness of a truck. And we had a hard time finding really good trucks because of that. Yeah, yeah, actually, you know, you bring a really good point. For those of you who are in Texas or in the South who are dealing with a really tough, uh, you know, winter right now, a lot of you guys have rear drive trucks and I bet you the market right now for used four wheel drive trucks has absolutely skyrocketed because now you're dealing with what we deal with, which is slippery highways, deep snow and, and really difficult traveling. Four wheel drive works a lot better, but the point is, is that it's probably difficult to find now in those areas because the high demand. Yeah. So that's what we've been dealing with for years. So let's look, take a look at the next truck that uh, we pulled out. Yeah, this the Nissan a, Titan. Yeah, 2005 Nissan Titan LE. And this is also a crew cab. And the asking price is 4,900 bucks. Okay. So we're, once again, we're staying within under five grand. That's correct. Uh, on this. Um, and here's one issue I immediately see. Oh, I see it. Uh, one image. Solamente uno, just one. And this is a private party, that's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But why not take actually detailed shots um, if you actually want to sell your vehicle, mm -hmm. you want to do it quickly and efficiently, um, give us information first. Do you right? really want to sell your truck, just take one picture? I mean, come on, how hard is it to use your phone and take five or six pictures? There's sort of a limit, and, and I, think, I think you guys would understand this. If the vehicle has damage, be, you know, fair, be honest, take a picture of the damage. You know, if there's a bumper that's crumpled or whatever, take a picture of it, put it in there. In this case, I don't know how the right side of that vehicle looks. I don't know how the interior looks. I don't know how the bed looks. This is a red flag. Is there a reason why they're not providing that? Or are they just too lazy to do so? Or maybe there's something wrong and this isn't actually a proper sale. Well, or, uh I, I just found there are other red flags, uh -huh. and it's actually pretty open in okay. the description. It says, uh, truck runs and drives, but check engine light is on. Mm -mm. The slip warning is on, so probably like a ABS or wheel speed sensor mm -hmm. uh, on this particular truck. Uh, provides an OBD2 code, and then at the very end it says, it has rebuilt from salvage title. Salvage title, now that's a big one. Keep in mind that some insurance companies will not insure you if you buy a vehicle with a salvage title. In fact, in some places, in some cities, and some states, you're not even permitted to sell a salvage title vehicle to people. I mean, I'm, this wrecking yards, yes, mechanics, yes, and stuff like that, but you really need to check your lo local ordinance and make sure that it is okay for you to buy a salvage vehicle. And here's the other problem. Salvage vehicles, there could be any number of reasons why they are a salvage title and they don't have to provide all of that information. If it's a flood damaged vehicle, by the way, don't buy a flood damaged vehicle. But if it was one, which happens a lot, 
that could be a salvage title and that could be a real issue. Or if it's been in a major accident, enough to detonate airbags and crumple certain zones, hey, some talented mechanics out there can make it look good, but the vehicle is compromised. So you have to keep that in mind. Salvage titles are something to steer clear of for most buyers. Absolutely. And like you said, well, maybe you want just a farm vehicle that will never leave your... That's a totally uh, different story. Yeah. Yep. Salvage title, you can get it cheap. Mm -hmm. Boom. Nice. It's a private vehicle that never goes on public roads. Right. That's a totally Done. different story. Done. But yeah, otherwise it's a huge problem and it can, can be a very big problem, like you said. Um, so the next truck I just pulled up is a 2001 Toyota Tundra. Mm -hmm. And uh, dude, Tundra. Yeah, I know. Tundras yeah. are... Man, those things are seriously very, very capable trucks. And more importantly, they're trucks that usually hold their value. So this one is under $5,000. The question is why? This one is listing at two grand. Mm -hmm. And this one, I believe, is in California. Yeah, this is the one, uh, one of the ones in California. Yeah. Um, so first of all, it's a private party. I can see six images, so that's pretty good. But but one bell is going off already. Okay. The well, price the, the is price low. The price is really the low. The price is low. So dig a little deeper. Adamer, 250,000 miles. Well, from a, for a Toyota, it could be okay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it says right here, great project or parts. Uh -oh. Needs a rear end, That's but fine. the motor, transmission, and transfer case are all good. Mm. Good tires. Odometer is not working. Oops. Oops. Okay. So, so that could have 350,000 miles on it. It could, it could have a lot more mileage on it. Now, I always stay clear, you know, the minute you see something that says mechanic special, unless you're a mechanic looking, <laughs> I would probably walk away. And that's probably what this should have been advertised as. Uh, because, look, replacing a rear end, you got to buy the rear end, you got to replace it. That's a lot of money. It's a couple thousand dollars probably right there to, to, to take Alignment. Care of. You have yeah. need sometimes special tools. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, and that's not even counting the fact that this thing has 250,000 miles minimum. Or unknown. And, you know, some states uh, uh, may require an older vehicle like this to have an odometer checked mm -hmm. or corrected or whatever. Some states may not. So it depends on kind of where you live. Right. But I always love... Uh, Colorado requires it, first of all, but I always <laughs> need to know exactly what I'm getting, right? So well, yeah. if, it's, if it says unknown or, you know, it's broken, that's, that's not a good sign. You know, this is something like if I owned a, another Tundra that was in, you know, that blew its engine, but everything else was good, something like this might be compelling because suddenly I have a great parts vehicle. I get it. But uh, for those of you who are looking for a runner, something that has a rear end issue, mm, not so good. Now, here is another... Uh, one and this one I think is here. Yeah, it's in Fort Collins, so yeah. here in Colorado, and this one's different. Yeah, this is another Tundra, almost the same year, two thousand, mm -hmm. um, and is is listing at forty five hundred bucks. That sounds like a, a pretty decent price. That, that's a much more logical one. That one yeah. doesn't set off the red flag of mm, two thousand dollars for a truck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, odometer two hundred twenty eight thousand. Okay, okay, still kind of high mileage, but not too bad. Mm -hmm. And good image. Well, actually. Uh, a lot of these images are kind of like a little fuzzy, so not yeah, great. It's, once again, it, it, it drives me crazy, and I'm sure a lot of you guys just there to shake your heads. When you look at these ads, why can't you guys just take a nice picture? Just just hold it, you know, hit the quarters and, you know, make sure the sun isn't facing you so you're taking a picture of a shadow. Make sure you have the entire truck in the shot. This truck obviously has had some front-end damage. Um, it has a new, uh, obviously in the picture, a new front fender at least, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a damaged bumper, stuff like that. Yeah, so it's been hit. Does it have a salvage title though, or does they say it does? Uh, well, let's look a little bit uh, further. So it, ha it has a new bumper, grill, and new battery. The only thing that it still needs to be replaced is a driver's side door. Hmm. It has been in an accident and some of the body is damaged. Okay, fair well, enough. that's very honest. Yeah, they're that's being fine. honest and they're talking about what's wrong with or what's been replaced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and what hasn't been replaced. But once again, um, so let's talk about the test drive a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So let's say this looks good enough for me. Yeah, this is something that I'd probably consider. Yeah, so le le let's call the guy. So okay. first of all, it's got, if they don't pick up the phone, or if they never call you back, obviously, and it's another That's a good red flag if they don't call you back. Now, a lot of people do prefer text. They just would rather not talk. I'm one of those people, by the way. I just would rather work with text. So 
The good thing to do is if you call them, especially if you're using you know, Craigslist, whatever, if you call them, also consider sending an email and or a follow-up text just to let them know, hey, if you don't want to call me back, you can text me back or whatever. Yeah, let's organize a time, a safe place to meet, maybe uh, a parking lot of a big store. Yeah, usually supermarkets, banks, stuff like that. Yes, some public place, you know, because it makes them feel better, it makes you feel better, right? Right, right. Some safe place to meet. Um, and then, of course, it would be good not to do it at night. <laughs> So you can actually see the track, right? Which isn't easy during the week because a lot of people work yeah. regular hours and then, you know, they, they're done at four or five o'clock. And, mm, and, and we had one of these. So Roman, Tommy and I went down to kind of South Denver mm -hmm. and we uh, were looking at another Ford F-150 once again. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and we met at a gas station. Uh, it was a public place, but it was at night. Yeah. Because uh, the other person was working all day. You know, we were working here. Um, thankfully, the gas station had lights, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and I had a little flashlight and, you know, we went underneath the truck and tried to, but still it's not the same. No. You know, you're missing certain things. Daylight Looking, helps. Yeah, daylight is huge. And then we went for a test drive and I would always recommend um, at least find a loop where you can go some slow speed and high speed driving. And test the brakes and steering. Yeah, so, so something where you can get up to speed at 60 miles an hour mm -hmm. and, and kind of feel the steering, how that feels, how the brakes feel, right. uh, acceleration, etc. Uh, because when we uh, actually purchased our Dodge Ram, Roman and I really liked to look at the truck and we did only very short drive. We didn't right. take it on the highway. That was my bad. That was our problem. We that explains the brakes not really working very yeah, well. Yeah, and we d yeah. didn't quite, you know, sniff out the brake problem. Hey, you know what though? That was still a good buy as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so once again, so you want to be thorough, as yes. thorough as possible. You know, I know that some of you would say, well, maybe that's chump change. Why would you push someone so hard? You know, not for everybody. $5,000 is still a lot of dough. And here's the other thing to keep in mind. If you get to the vehicle and it's someone's been running it or it is running when you get there, that might be a red flag. It might be an issue with the fact that it runs really rough at first or perhaps there's a little bit of smoke that comes out at first or later on oil dripping, all of these things, if the engine is running for a little while, some of that stuff will go away and some of that stuff will actually manifest itself. So here's a point. After you do your test drive, your big loop, when you get back, let it sit for a little bit, talk to the owner, whatever, then look underneath the truck again and see whether or not there's oil or any fluids coming out. Yeah, totally. So let's move on. This next one is a midsizer, actually. Yes. Um, and this is a Frontier. Yes, and I actually put this up here for a reason. We were going to stick with um, half-ton trucks, you know, four, four by fours and whatnot. But the reason why I wanted to put up this mid-sized truck had nothing to do with the fact that it's a truck. First of all, Andre and I love this front, year Frontier. We're both it's, like it's really into it. It's a 2002. Yes, yeah, it's yes. 2002. So it's an older one. But you may have noticed that uh, it has a lot of um, <clears throat> aftermarket upgrades. <laughs> and one of the things you guys need to keep in mind is that what a lot of, and this is from a dealership, what a lot of unscrupulous dealers will do is they'll get a car in an auction that has been in a accident or something has happened to it. And they will, rather than replace the parts with OEM parts, they'll find really cheap, simple parts to slam on there and make it look like it's a custom vehicle. And this is a really good example of that. This truck, most likely, if you look at the hood, has been in some sort of front end collision. And rather than, um, replace the hood front bumper and some other components they decided to you could look at that hood it doesn't look quite right right um they put on this baja front end and uh lifted it and put on wheels that don't really look like they're stock either but the point is is that you need to really look at this because this truck might be a major lemon and if you're paying five thousand dollars for any type of truck good idea to make sure that it has not been compromised up front or in the rear right yeah absolutely and this is a once again, 2002 Frontier, they're asking 4995 By the Actually, way- Actually, this one's been sold, so just so you know. Yeah, but by the way, we're, we're not trying to, you know, call out any person or a dealership or anything like that. Just stuff we're, to look for. Yeah, we're, we're just talking about generically and using these as examples, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is really important, I think. Uh, when I saw this first, it looks impressive. I mean, yeah, yeah, at first, but, there's but, a- But it- like you said, there may be something hidden behind it. Right. right. And that's, that's, that was an immediate red flag for me. At first I saw the profile view and I thought, ooh, this is kind of interesting. And then, um, yeah, I saw that and then there was another picture as well. And 
I don't know if they were deliberately trying to cut off the front end of the truck with some of these shots and then when they shot the front end of the truck they did it at a very nice angle but you could still clearly see that the hood was a little weird. The point is is that these types of things you need to look for and make absolutely sure that these vehicles have not been in a major front end collision. First thing I would do if I did look at this truck is open the hood and look and see if there's any areas that were sprayed, welded and or look like they've been crumpled. Very important to make sure, especially with front end security, because if those airbags detonated, that means that truck got, you know, hit something really hard. And even if they haven't, you still have, you think about the, the front end being compromised and that in itself is a safety issue. Absolutely, and this one is a manual transmission truck. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and I think you and I agree on this, uh, one of my dream vehicles is actually a uh, uh, Frontier that's similar in the in But the, the supercharged one, right? The supercharged one. They're so hard to find now, yeah. especially the ones with the manual transmission. I, I saw a yellow one, and it was the it was the King Cab, not the, not the Crew Cab, mm -hmm. and it was like in Maine or Vermont or whatever, and it had like two hundred eighty thousand miles on it or something. It had the cool wheels, and it was supercharged, which up here in Colorado would be awesome. And they were asking way too much money for it. Of course, they're very rare, unique trucks. Mm -hmm. But once again, um, you have to look at the history of every truck and, and keep keep studying that. So let's move on a little bit further. And I want to talk about another issue that uh, we learned from the Dodge Ram okay. that we purchased ourselves. Um, speaking of Rams, here's the Ram 2500. Uh, uh, yeah. This is a red truck here. It's a heavy duty 2500 diesel. Uh, but before we look into this one, um, when we got the truck, the Dodge Ram, mm -hmm. that we purchased for five grand, um, it's a 2001, by the way, uh, we got it back to the office, you know, we kind of made the deal. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, well, I initially saw that somebody had apparently either a gooseneck or a fifth wheel in the back because the bed liner was cut and there were mounting holes. Yeah, it, was, um, it, it looks a little weird. Yeah, so so then my wheels were turning, you know, I'm sometimes pretty slow uh, on the uptake. But eventually what we figured out is that since the brakes were kind of shot, the transmission has a slight slip in it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and also it turned out when we get, actually gave it to our mechanic, some of the bull joints, some of the suspension components were kind of worn out. Yeah. Uh, this truck may have been overworked. If it was hauling a fifth wheel, and it's a light duty, you know, half ton truck, it was just overused potentially. And that is the bottom line on that truck. It was overused. There's no doubt in my mind yeah. after getting a good look at it. And a lot of it, you know, look guys, we, you obviously don't know exactly what's happened with the truck, but there are sometimes clues. Here's a really good example. If the rear suspension is completely shot on a truck, it's entirely possible that it spent its life, its hard life, hauling extremely heavy things that were beyond its limit. If the bed has been warped, maybe something's been in there that's just way too heavy for that bed. Or in our case, if they mounted a fifth wheel onto it, onto a half ton truck for crying yeah. out loud, then it's probably had a very difficult service life within its, you know. It, but low miles. Years. Yeah, it but low about, miles. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, but low miles, but maybe very hard miles. And right? hey, those wheels have been painted. That's important. Yeah, black, black oh. wheels. So let's take a look at this uh, 2500. And when I first saw it, first of all, it's a dealership uh, that's selling it. Uh, because, well, first of all, it's, well, the truck is very clean. The images are pretty good. Yeah. Um, but also, my first red flag was the price. Yeah, so... It's a 2002 Ram 2500 for 2895 bucks. It's a diesel. That is remarkably low. I could not find <laughs> another truck anywhere near that price that had that type of uh, packaging. So, in other words, no other diesel trucks in its class anywhere near that price, not unless they were completely wrecked. And it's got a Cummins, and there is an actual picture under the hood, yeah. a kind of a close-up, which is a little strange. Um, and a very clean looking engine too. And a odometer says 151,000 miles, so relatively low miles. Yeah, especially for an old for, truck like For that. a big diesel. Mm -hmm. And it says here, no issues, runs great, clean Carfax, no accidents, recently serviced. But still, there's there's some sort of a bell going up in my head because yeah. the price seems too low. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, hey, who knows? Maybe there's something about this truck we don't know, or maybe they're just hitting unbelievably low prices for some other reason. But for the most part, we couldn't find any other truck in that class anywhere near that price. 
Yeah, so that could be a warning. Yeah. But but it may be worth a call. You know, maybe worth a call and check it out and see. Could be a bait and switch, yeah. basically, where they're saying, oh, they had this awesome truck. Oh, no, I'm oh, sorry, it's we gone just now. sold it. Yeah. But we have something else that you'll really like. Come on in, we'll make you a deal. Yeah, walk away. Uh, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Uh, so next truck right here, this is local in Colorado. But, um, Look familiar? It's, a, it's an F-150 white color, regular cab, XL, work truck, uh, 2007 is the year. They're asking 4,500 bucks, 207,000 miles. It's almost the identical configuration to the truck we purchased. That's exactly it. That's why I actually, that's why I, I, I chose that one because it's really similar, although a little bit more expensive than the- Than what we paid. Than, yeah, but the one we had also has a really cool shell. Yes, so a couple things. For example, for, for some reason, the pictures that are shown here cut out the front end. Yeah. And you could see the front bumper hanging a little. Yeah. Hanging I, low. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Yes, I do, because I didn't <laughs> want to show the bumper. And that's that's kind of unscrupulous. I'm sorry. Look, maybe you didn't mean to do that. Or, you know, yes, you did. But uh, the point is, is that it's had front end damage, and you're not showing that. And that in itself is just... I would walk away from that. I would let them know that you knew and then walk away, maybe make fun of you know, their kids or whatever. No, the thing is, is that um, you have to you know, do a little bit of investigating. And this truck looks really good from every other angle. And it's, the price isn't bad. The mileage is pretty high, but it's not you know, completely unreasonable. Yeah, they're asking 4,500 bucks for this right. one. And how many pictures do they post? Four. And right. they're kind of poor quality. And it's a 4.6 Triton V8, which is actually our truck is exactly also equipped the same with yeah. 4.6. Should be a 4x4. Four four. Uh, yeah, 4x4 four four, uh, XL in this case. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the stuff is there, but the tires look kind of in poor condition. And he says yeah. it's got a cracked windshield. So it's like he's trying to be forthright? Y yeah, but not but, really forthright. But not really, because we so, know there's something wrong with that bumper. So yeah, so a couple of red flags have mm -hmm. one off. One off. Once again, but I, I would say from everything we've learned so far, uh, what I really liked is actually talking with private sellers. Yeah. Uh, because first of all, when you speak on the phone, and I know the text thing, mm -hmm. I know, but sometimes when you actually get them on the phone, you can kind of tell by the voice, you know, are they fast talking? Are they bothered? Are they, you know, yeah. do they want to talk to you or they're kind of open about it? So you can get a good feeling sometimes or a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a good feeling, you actually go see the truck, yep. right? And then maybe they have service records. You know, maybe... We, you know, which you'll be more... Yeah. I think more. it's more common to find that with, pe with people who have actually taken care of their truck, which is already a great sign if they have a lot of service records. Uh, if they keep a log, oh my God, that'd be awesome. And that's rare, but it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the honesty of somebody who's owned a truck for a long period of time saying, you know, this is why I'm getting rid of it and... You know, or you know, here's the problems with the truck and everything else. You'd be surprised how much better it is talking to an individual rather than talking to a dealer who has absolutely no clue what the truck is. Um, I, and I have a real prejudice with dealers, especially used car dealers, who just want to move it. They want to mer move the merchandise, make their commission, get you out of there as soon as possible, and sell the next vehicle. Whereas, and you have you know, a private individual who's like, you know, "This is my baby. I don't yeah. want to get rid of it, but yeah. here's why I'm doing it." It just seems like it works a lot better that way. Yeah, totally. And this is a, finally a truck that I yeah, really I, like. I like this one. Yeah. So this truck, uh, I could actually call on. <laughs> so this is a Chevy Colorado, so it's a midsizer in this mm -hmm. case. Um, they're asking 4850 bucks. It's local here. It's in Colorado. One thing that here, um, they don't say what year it is, but they do list... No, there's no VIN. Yeah, it's 2005, Andre. Where? On uh, upper right-hand corner of that screen that you just... Scroll down. Oh yeah, 2005. I'm sorry, that was a little hard to find for some reason on this particular. No, this should be the four-cylinder, four-wheel drive uh, automatic, I believe. Yes, and this is 187,000 miles, uh, but lots of images. So let me see, 23 pictures. They're very high-quality pictures from every angle, every possible thing you want to see. You can we see the... like that. Seeing the odometer and yes. seeing somebody who's actually taking the time to put the key in the ignition and you know. Get the odometer to work so you can see how many miles are on there. That is actually really important. And it's if you're selling, it's a good thing to do. And if you're buying, it's a good thing to see. Yeah. Uh, they took a picture of every tire, it looks like. The, yeah, tires look good. The tread looks good. 
Um, not quite sure exactly how old the tires are, but you can check that when you go there. Mm -hmm. uh, under the hood, a wide view of the, uh, of the hood area, which is great. Mm -hmm. And also... That's great. I love yeah. that they did that. And the emission control sticker even. So a lot of information already, boom. Even, even before I read any descriptions of it. The, and, and what's the first thing you do? Usually, I would say 90% of the time you'll look at the opening part of the description and then you go right to the pictures. That's what I do. Short attention span. And you go into those pictures and then if you're interested a little bit, you know, then you get into the, you know, the minutiae, all the other stuff that they've added. And this person's added a lot of information. So this is a person who's willing and serious and wants to sell this truck and is doing their proper due diligence in order to make it happen. That right there has already, you know, gained my attention. And you can see there's a little bit of rust maybe on the front bumper. Okay, that's all right. You know, it's a used well, that truck. That never happens with Chevy Colorado. No, never. Uh, but anyway, and generically speaking, the body looks stock, right? Mm -hmm. Factory truck. The wheels even look stock. Yep. The paint looks okay. So I would definitely would recommend this for about 4,800 bucks. And probably, you could probably talk them down for a couple hundred or several hundred dollars less, right? Yeah, possibly. If, um, if they're doing forty-eight fifty, and you were to say, look, I'll give you $4,500 cash, I'm willing to bet you can make a deal. Yeah, totally. So this is a really great truck. It has a tunnel cover. Yeah. What, what is not to like? Yeah, you know, it's, I know some of you guys are like, well, it's a Chevy and it's got... You know, and actually, the, uh, the, the, the five-cylinder and the four-cylinder that they had available for these trucks... I know that there's like a mixed bag. Some people say they're super reliable. Other people say they're impossible to service. I've heard it all. Um, and I actually had a friend who had the um, six cylinder version of this truck mm -hmm. and um, absolutely drove its wheels off. Put on almost 300,000 miles in the South, even though it had a uh, four wheel drive and it was a really solid, reliable truck, but very difficult to service. Yeah, so you you may have to look at those uh, items as well. You can tell um, how old I am by choosing this one. I I love Dodge Dakotas. They're just, they're cool. All yeah, so this are. is this is an older Dakota, 1992 Dodge Dakota. Here's another track that we pulled up. Mm -hmm. um, so once again, so first listing uh, about eight nine images. That's pretty nice. That's that's great. Um, I can see already peeling paint, mm -hmm. uh, some issues, but the asking price is. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a four-wheel drive uh, and an extended cab. Yeah. yeah. Now here's the cool thing about uh, at least these Dakotas is that a lot of them have the extended cab and they would have a bench seat up front. So technically speaking, legally speaking, you can carry six people, um, which can be helpful for people who just got to get out there and work. Uh, the other thing about this truck is that it's um, there's a couple things that that just stand out with the picture. Can you hit the some of the other pictures? There was another one that I. No, the, the one with the thumb. Well, they're covering yes, the license plate. Yes, exactly. So that, that's actually a really good idea. If you can either put your thumb up there or take a, you know, a piece of tape or cloth and put it over your license plate, that's a really good idea if you're selling it. Yeah, because some people, you know, may that's use the information uh, in the wrong way. Maybe they want to, you know, kind of find where you live or something like yeah, that. Yeah, some stuff like that. Right? Um, so, yeah, it's good to be safe. Right? Exactly. So that's really good stuff. But here's a red flag, one small one, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it has a 3.9 liter V6 engine with <laughs> only 76,000 miles. So they probably replaced the engine. Yes. That's what it, yeah, is it, did it say it but, but it doesn't say it's a new engine. So it says, it says it has a new catalytic converter, fuel injectors, distribution cap, uh, of course, a longer bed option. Um, it says it's past emissions. So what this sounds like, and you can, of course, ask, right? Is this, a, is this engine been replaced? Because it looks kind of like... Which is actually a good thing in some cases. You know, a newer engine, hey, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, but maybe if it was done in a driveway by somebody who doesn't know a lot about engines... <laughs> it could be a problem. Uh, uh, it could be an issue. Or if it was done professionally, right, by a mechanic, that could be great. Especially if they have a receipt yeah. or, you know, some sort of... Yeah, it, this is one of those things where this does take more investigating. And you will have to go there and you will have to talk to them about it. Um, and by the way, those old V6s on the Dodge... Uh, Dakotas were they were fairly reliable, but they weren't very strong and they got terrible mileage. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that this truck is an example, especially yeah. an older one. And here's another cool truck. Um, it's a Ranger, an older Ford Ranger that you pulled up. Yeah, um, and I, I was actually contemplating trying to talk Roman into buying one of these for us. Um, 
just because I think the old Rangers were really cool, especially when they had the four liter V6. That they were just awesome. Uh, very small trucks by comparison, uh, especially if you look at the old Ranger next to the new Ranger. This one's a pretty clean example, um, if you want to go through some of it. And there's yeah. a lot of pictures, which is great. 12 images, um, it's black and color, 2001 model, um, extended cab, four wheel drive. And you can see, you, actually pictures with lights on. So you can see the lights are actually functioning. Yep. Um, and working, and the headlights and the tail lights. It looks pretty clean. The, the uh, license plate is blacked out. So that's pretty uh, pretty neat. Yeah, if you spend an extra few minutes, you can actually go and use a tool on your phone and or computer and black out a license plate without too much of a problem. It shows the odometer, 189,000 miles. Yet another thing that we really like, being able to see that odometer. And look, there's even more detail. Yeah, four low, four high, two-wheel drive. It mm -hmm. shows the controls for four-wheel drive system. It shows the four-liter engine, which is actually a pretty good engine, actually. I, I absolutely these, adore that engine. It's yeah, a the, great engine. These V6s. Um, um, were pretty good. And once again, this is from a dealer, used dealership, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a lot of information, lots of images, and it seems like they're kind of on top of their game with this one. That's exactly it. And that's one of the other things to keep in mind. One of the reasons, the only reason I'll go to a dealership is if they have this type of information and lots of pictures and it looks like the truck was well cared for and it's clean and everything else and they got it from a decent auction and it comes from a reputable source. You can go online nowadays to Yelp or a variety of other things and actually check on the dealership to make sure that it's at least not a completely corrupt organization, right? Yeah. Um, and you'd be surprised. There are other ways of finding out as well. Word of mouth helps. But in this case, this truck looks really good. I mean... The I, bed I, looks fine, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's... it's a well, really there's a rip on a seat, yeah, but, yeah, but, but it's a used truck. Well, yeah. yeah, what do you expect? Yeah, what do you expect? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, the point is, is that this is yet another example of, you know, just a really interesting product and the right way to sell it, at least in terms of images and in terms of what you're getting, you know, for uh, information because it's all listed there. Yeah, and finally, so we talked about the Ford we purchased, the mm -hmm. Dodge Ram we purchased ourselves. Uh, I want to show really quick and talk about the the Chevy we purchased. Yeah, uh, it was a 1998? Yep, it's a 98. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to look up TFL Classics because we're considering anything over 20, 21 years old as a classic vehicle. And we have a recent video where Tommy actually went through. Basically, if it's older than Tommy, it's classic. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, Tommy is, you know, a walking 70-year-old, you know, He is an old soul. Yeah, he very, really very is cool. Old. Um, but this truck was actually kind of fell into the lap of Roman and Tommy yeah. in a way because they were looking and this kind of came up suddenly on the listing and it turned, they actually went a quite a distance. Um, I can't remember. I think this was maybe Cheyenne mm -hmm. or closer to it Wyoming. Was, yeah, it was, it, was, yeah. it was in Wyoming, I thought. So, uh, but turned out to be an excellent truck. It's a 98. It has a 5 liter V8, mm -hmm. so not a 5.3 or yeah. some of the other engines. Um, that sometimes people are used to. It's an extended cab, but only the two door, no, no like little um, clamshell door. Yeah. Um, it has a cap, uh, yeah. truck topper in the back, and some really weird looking front uh, grill guard. Yeah. Now, um, there are a couple things th that this truck represents. First of all, there are people out there who insist that this design, this generation of Chevy, well, General Motors truck is the best ever and was the best ever. And I'm not going to debate you guys. I absolutely adore these things. I think they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, and this one, other than some door issues, uh, it really is a very, very clean truck. And we got it for a steal. Yeah, this was basically 3200 bucks, Which is thirty two. Just... It's a four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. The tires are well, not mm, too they're bad. Okay. They're OK. Uh, Four-wheel drive works. Mm -hmm. Everything works. The truck topper is in kind of a rough shape. Some of the windows are peeling. Or yeah, whatever. It's, yeah, it's um, it But the interior respect. is great. Yep, in really good shape. Yeah, interior is great, and and it drives actually wonderfully. It drives great. It's it's one of the best of of the vehicles that we bought. It's one of the best drivers of them. It's smooth and the suspension is well sorted. It's it's a fantastic truck for thirty two hundred bucks. And it has about just over two hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, you know, from the records and everything, what, what little we know, it's just been maintained well, and it runs really, I mean, just beautifully. 
Yeah, so a part of this series, right, we're going to compare these three trucks, the Ford, the Dodge, and the, and the Chevrolet. Right. Um, and also, we'll have them for a few months. Oh, yeah. So you will see some reports from us, you know, did we actually, you know, did the exact trucks actually turn out the way we wanted them to or not? Yeah. Um, and I, But I think, and I'm not just saying it because I've owned Chevrolets in the past. Mm -hmm. This was probably my favorite because, like you said, drives well, looks well. And it was a great deal. Yeah, this is a truck that, despite its mileage, I would I would drive every day back and forth to work, and I, I live 45 miles away from work. So, it's it's that good. The other two trucks, maybe not so much. I, I don't think yeah. I'd drive them quite as much. Yeah. But no, seriously, it's it's great. So the point is, it, we're not just trumpeting the fact that we got such a great deal. The other part is, you can get this type of deal as well. And think about it. You know, if you're a working guy and you just don't want to spend. You know, I don't know, fifty-one thousand dollars on a new truck or something like that. Kind of like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but you can still find deals out there, and this is just a fantastic truck. So, they exist. They are still there. As I said, you know, with things that have recently happened, the market might be drying up, but uh, they are still there. And also, don't be afraid to go outside your comfort zone in terms of location. You might have to go a couple hundred miles away in order to find the truck. Of course, that makes it more difficult because. Then you have to actually get out there. Yeah. What if you don't want the truck? It's a wasted trip. Yeah. But, you know, that's a whole different story. And then finally, I think we're ready to kind of wrap up. Mm -hmm. But finally, I would say also um, go out and look at some of the enthusiast sites like forums. Absolutely. Um, and actually look up, you know, the if you find something interesting like this, like a 98 Chevy, mm -hmm. just look up some issues. Does it, what is it known for? Is it known to be reliable or not reliable? Is the 5 liter engine bad or good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. One final thing, real quick. Uh, on these sites, including you know, uh, you know Craigslist, you're able, usually they have a VIN number. You can quickly cut and paste that VIN number and just look at it. Just put the VIN number right up there on your search and you'll be able to discover some very interesting tidbits. That's if it comes doesn't come with a Carfax or something. And you might be able to learn its history or at least see where it's been before and learn some of the technical information about that truck. Yeah, totally. And you don't have to, you'll be armed with knowledge, right? When you go there and you'll be able to, you know, speak with the authority and say, you know, you know what? It's a fair price or maybe it's not a fair price. Let's make a deal. Yeah. And don't be afraid to, to negotiate. Look, the worst thing they can say is no. You know? That's it's not like they're gonna, you know, throw you off their property. Don't ever come here again with that type of lowball offer. Well they might do that actually. Yeah, so I think in the end we still learned a lot. I mean yes. even after doing this for many, many years. And I think we found uh, some really cool trucks. Yes, and in the future, they are going to be featured on some really cool videos, so stay f uh, tuned to that. <laughs> I can't speak anymore. Anyway, it's because you're so, you want to drive the Chevy. I'm dying to drive the, well, no, I want to drive the other one. Okay, <laughs> so we will be back with more information on these three trucks that we're talking about in the near future. Thanks, guys, and as always, tfltruck.com and tfloffer.com. Nathan and I are there um, reading comments, posting stuff. Yes, we are. Uh, all the time. So thank you, for, as always, for following along. Adios, guys.